boy. Yeah, it's not very lucky for this boy. Hi guys, it's another scorching hot day here in Thailand on Toonan Lee's Poor Pang Farm and it's a long overdue crayfish video and quite a few of you guys have been saying Lee when you're going to do an update and uh, I've got no other excuse for not doing one other than me being crap and a bit of a slacker so today I thought right Lee um, I've got some leftover din dins so we've got some rice, chicken bones uh, some fish bones from some lovely fish curry yesterday and a few other little bits and bobs. I've got my trusty lobster pot uh, and I'm going to bait it and throw it in our grow out pond to the side of me. There's a few reasons why I want to do this. First off is check the size and condition of the crayfish. I've noticed that as the water levels dropping because we are in the middle of the dry season now as a little, you can see the little bit of algae that's forming on top of the crayfish. So I just want to make sure it's not harming them. The a couple of times that we've we've trapped them to to check them, um, we haven't caught any babies other than ones about that sort of size, which is the ones that we will be we've been putting in. We, we let them grow to that sort of size and then we we throw them in. We've had no juvenile ones, which which really means that it's a good chance that they're not breeding in there, which which would be a bit of a shame really because we don't want to be doing it in the tanks all the time and then transferring them grading them all, all continuously so there's a few reasons why it might this might be the case one is it could be a food thing i know they're eating a lot of algae and they get the tit bits out of our out of our kitchen waste and few of the bits and bobs from around the farm but maybe it's a protein then they are getting enough protein calcium i don't know yet the other thing that's concerning me there's a hoofing great tilapia in here and we did drain this pond down, um, it must be nearly two years ago now. If you've never seen that video, it's a bit of an epic, <laughs> epic movie that was. It was, I think it was our first live premiere. We, we thought we'd got all the fish out, but it looks like one little tilapia remained in there and it's grown big now. Now they will eat crayfish, certainly they'll eat the, the small ones. Now when we just come out here at night time, we put the torch on the side. Uh, just check on the, the the initial crayfish that we put in. Uh, there was loads and loads of shrimp. There's not many shrimp in there now. So again, that, that would lead me to think that maybe the tilapia has, has started noshing through them. But it's only one fish. We haven't seen any other tilapia in there. There's loads of other like, uh, I don't know the name of them. You have to apologize. It's like, a, it's like quite an ornamental, we'll too call them fighting fish. It's the ones that they... They keep in little milk bottles in the market and sell them and quite a lot, often the guys will, will buy one or two and then they'll get to fight each other and they might put a bit of a wager on it, although you're not supposed to in Thailand of course. So they would eat very, very small, you know, newly hatched crayfish. So whether that's an issue. We've also had birds here. And they'll sit on top of the, the hyacinth, but they tend to, they've just picked off all the guppies. We've put thousands and thousands of guppies in there and they've just been nailing those. But I'm sure they would get a crayfish if it was right near the edge. Never ever seen a bird get a crayfish. You very, very rarely see any cormorants now. We did see one uh, a week ago, but that was the first time in about three months. It was it was my fault because only the, the day before I'd said to Toon, you never see the cormorants anymore. There you go back again but I think because there's so few fish in there he's not bothered he's not even bothered with our tilapia pond the catfish pond mind you would have to be a silly cormorant to go in that one um, the snakehead pond not bothered so I really like to get to the bottom of why they're not breeding the other thing that it, it may be is um, the bottom is pretty bare although it's nice and uneven from when we had it excavated out and the, the, the sides, you see the sides, it, it looks like these ponds have been just chiseled straight out of the rock. What happens is during the dry season and the water level drops right down, whenever you get the high winds or you get a, a, a sudden downpour of rain, it just washes the last little remaining topsoil into the, into the pond until you're just left with, basically it looks like a stone, a stone wall all the way around your pond. It does look pretty fascinating to me. Um, there's, there's lots of little nooks and crannies there. Of course, there's quite a big high surface area for the algae to grow. So you'll see the crayfish at night picking the bits off there. 
But apart from that, whether there's not enough areas for them to hide in there, so I might have to set up balls of nets and then submerge them uh, and just sort of like hang them off the bottom of the pond, give them extra areas to sort of like lay eggs. Well, not lay eggs, but you know, to hatch their eggs out and that. I don't, I don't know yet. So we'll, so we'll, we'll, we'll put the trap in there. We'll have a look at them. The last reason I'm doing it is because I, I want to eat some. <laughs> you watched the last video we did on the crayfish where um, Toon barbecued them and then she put like a, a chilli garlic uh, butter um, coating on them. They're, oh, they were, they were fantastic. I'm only interested in, in taking the big males out. Now these guys in, have been in here about a year now so they should be approaching fully grown. And they're not as big as they, they, they say they can grow. So, again, it could be stocking numbers. Um, I don't know. It's all new to us. You know, grow out ponds. We've done them in the tanks. Uh, so we'll see what happens. It, it could be uh, the cannibalistic side of things in there because it's quite heavily stocked in there. So putting small ones in there. If there are females um, hatching out berries, then yeah, they would be fair game for for all the others. I don't think it is that though, because we've never had the two times we put the trap in, we've never took a, we've never got hold of a, a female that's buried up carrying the eggs. So, you know, you would have thought in two two sessions you would you would get a, a buried up female. I don't know. Interesting, isn't it? Basic lobster pot. A few of you have seen this before. Use it for catching wild crabs as well. We've got a little slide door at the end. Uh, crispy toad is optional. It's been in the garage. Ingress point for a lobster there, number one. Lobster, well, this time crayfish. Another one there. And then on the top is your bait hatch. So I'm going to put all the food in there. And then I'm going to put a couple of rocks on top of that. So we've got some rice there. Crayfish love the rice. Well, they, they'll eat just about anything, the crayfish. Well, what we've noticed, they will. Chicken bones, they'll have a good nosh on those. That keeps them busy for a while. Fish bones might take a little bit longer for them to get through, but yeah. And greens, you, know, you, can, you can just go around your, your pond and cut your weeds and your grass and throw them in there. And then you come out early evening time and you'll see that most of the time the, the crayfish will just come up on the the sides and then they'll they'll start eating in there uh, rice straw as well that's that's quite a good one the old um king number nine from thailand the late number nine king uh, he was um really proactive in pushing people growing crayfish and he was saying if you if you grow rice, you've, you've obviously got a water source there. Just dig a bit of a pond, protect the sides so they can't get out. Uh, and then when you cut your rice, if you have been organic, which of course he was a fan of, then you can give them your rice seed. Not your rice seed, but your, your rice straw. Whether they're getting enough protein from all that sort of thing, I don't know. When the rain season comes, we'll have a lot more moringa. So I'm going to be putting moringa in here, which is very, very high in protein. So that should help. I have got some pellet feed, sinking crayfish pellet feed. Uh, if you can't get hold of that, it, it's basically just glorified um, shrimp feed, prawn feed. So just get hold of some of that. Now and again, I'll throw a little bit in if I haven't got any scraps to throw in. But it looks like if it's a protein thing, then we're going to have to start putting some in. But the whole idea of doing crayfish really was growing something that doesn't take a lot of food and effort to to feed okay jobs are good and i got my grinner knot with my uh double overhand stop knot there right let's try and launch it in without launching myself in and uh without forgetting to hold the end always exciting throwing your trap in and then you lift it out an hour later and you got sod all Right, after a bit of jiggery pokery, the trap is set. So I've got plenty of other things to do, mainly uh, mulching around my coconut trees. It's so pig hot at the moment, I'm busy putting more 
water hyacinth around my coconut trees all the other pond is is done really thick but yeah i need to carry on with that so i'm gonna do an hour or two of that and then come back and check the traps all the coconut trees are now mulched and i've roped tune into being my lovely assistant Let's see if we've got anything in the trap We'll see. Oh my God, you got a lot. Crab. Oh by gun. Crab. 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 Well, they can go in the crab tank. Oh my God, honey. Yagging. Oh. Hungry. Wow, that is looking, that's looking quite oh good, isn't it? Oh my God. Whoa, yeah. look at that big boy. Him. Hello, you. Oh, some subs. Whoa, look at that, must be a big one. The claws on him. Wow. Let's get a lock on there. Hang on, put him straight in the bucket. Isn't it? He's going to go straight in the barbecue. He is. <laughs> Easier to get him when the. Take the lock out. Yeah, wait, wait, settle. Wow. I don't want to kill them. You don't want to kill them? I take the lock out. I don't want to lock fall on them. Frog dead. Oh. That's a shame, isn't it? Give it to the chickens. Small boys throwing the back in the pond. Oh, go on it. Go. Yeah, put in there for now. I was just thinking that she might be only been stood in it. So, boy, eating size or not? I think so. Don't want too many big boys in there anyway, that's boy. How you know it's a boy? The red flash is on the side. It's on the floor. But if they're small boys, put them back in there. It's a girl, isn't it? Not one pregnant. If mine's still in stomach, you don't know. Yeah, but we should get at least one that's pregnant. Wow. A lithia, a lithia dog, or whatever. All right, so we're just checking some of the girls that we got in this big tank here. We've let this all green up with the algae. Uh, hopefully the, the four girls and one boy have been doing the business. There's the first girl. Finger cross. Finger cross. It's a little girl. Yay! Oh ho ho! Right, so it's something. We to gotta do with check it. the dick tank. <laughs> <laughs> it's something to do with our grow out pond, then, isn't it? Oh my god! First one we checked in here is pregnant, but all the girls in here and a few others that we're throwing back that are really small. None of them are pregnant. Okay, so we've got a couple more girls there. There should be four girls in it. There remains one, one girl in here still to get. Let's see if any are pregnant. So, no. No. Into the non-pregnant tank for now. Nice one. Whoa! <laughs> oh, so do I in here? Brow. Okay. Ooh, ch -ch -ch. <laughs> Whoa, chill, chill, chill. She's wrapped her tail around. She might be pregnant. Probably. Let you go. Come on, girl. 
Bingo. Oh, I think I see. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Just start. <laughs> well, wherever the boy is, wherever he's hiding, he's doing a good job. So we'll look at him. Good lad. Keep doing the business, mate. Okay, ten girls to one stud boy. We like to start grow some snail. Round here, snail quite famous now, expensive because a lot of farmer, right farm, they use all the chemical poison for crab and snail. Nearly never, never ever find them now. But we live in a pond, fish pond. That stupid bird, we can't call it stupid, clever bird, take them all. So we got some in here. But when they give the egg, give the egg, nip hat, all the crayfish eat them. So, ah. Oh. It's good it's, food for them, good calcium. Yeah, good for crayfish. And the big one, uh, good some for eat nature. The eat the key. <laughs> nature. Eat the crayfish poo poo. I think I try to grow them some now. Hanging, hanging. <laughs> they, they, they just just start sexy time, but when they are real hanging, hanging, they they just go in there. I think they they male and female thing in there. <laughs> you know, I, I, you don't want me to say. Giant and penis. I don't say that. Okay. On to the next tank. So this is one of our new tanks. This really long term, in, well, basically serves two purposes. During the rainy season, it's going to be for bullfrogs, which are in the big tank behind two there. Uh, but until that time arises, where we need something for a lot of tadpoles, uh, we've put a few crayfish in here again it's one one stud muffin boy and five girls the hyacinth's grown well with a little bit of shade oh smell it oh show that for the camera oh and when they hatch normally when they get a bit of rain They'll migrate down the stem into the water and then the crayfish will eat them. And if they miss any, they'll uh, just carry on eating the muck that's in there. There's a few little frogs in here as well. You can't keep them all out. There's tree frogs and the key edge, which are a small Thai uh, wild frog. Now it may look to, to you guys that these uh, tanks are absolutely howling. If you keep them spotlessly clean, there's not so much food for the crayfish to eat and you end up having to feed them a lot more. We hardly feed these at all. Ooh, it's so big but nothing. Something book, book, book on my toe. It's a nice size, is that the boy? Oh, yeah. Mmm. Ah! She's grown Nothing. Well. Not pregnant though. So that's interesting. The two biggest girls that we've had out of the tanks aren't pregnant. We haven't found the boy yet anyway, so. Maybe they've eaten him. What you do with that British silly test pole in there? Take it into the other thing. Maybe they eat all your 
crayfish egg này tadpoles mm. oh, they do you know so they're gonna get eaten by the bullfrog now <gasps> yeah wow, wow. Oh, jackpot oh she's gonna have soon I'll give you a new home in a minute, girl. It's so weird, isn't it? You just give them a few inches of water and they make make babies. Give them a big pond, they don't make babies. Okay, all cleared out. We can see some of the girls <gasps> now. This is not too small, not not too giant, mummy yet. But uh, look at them, look at them, look at them. Ah! Oh. Oh, put them in the tank. Oh, she just just like egg. Yeah, if they're yellowy brown, they're still in the early stages. All right, you get some shade, girl. Just don't want them flapping around too much. Some of the eggs, or berries rather, they call them. Can uh, jettison. While, they come detached. Yeah, then uh, there's all sorts of things that will eat the eggs. You can cut it yourself. Of course I can. I'm a professional, aren't I? Got a hole in the net. He has one in Is front it? of you. Oh, there's the boy. Oh, he's only got one claw. I don't say anything, I don't say anything. <laughs> well, not many, but still do. I think it's come up a lot or something eating it. Yeah. All right, we'll take the boy out. Toon's pulled a plug. We would normally leave all this detritus in the bottom of the tank for hatching out the berries. Uh, but because it's been here for quite a while, there's all sorts of bugs in here, tadpoles and that sort of thing. And they would, they would start to eat some of the eggs, so... We're going to clean it out, put a load of the hyacinth back. It will soon build back up. Um, but by the time there's all sorts of bugs back in there, hopefully the crayfish should have started hatching. What are you praying, Lee? Oh. He was hiding. Yeah, hiding in the right. drain pipe. What's the Thai name for him? Ung. Ung. Ung ang, that what they make noise. Ung ang, ung ang. Right, we're going to put him in the turtle tank. The turtles might eat him. Make but he has got Ung ang, ung ang. But hopefully he's going to, or she, I don't know how you tell what's what. Going to jump out in a minute. It's not. It feels safe with me. I'm going to put him in the turtle tank, and there's plenty of sand there for them to dig, and hopefully make some baby ung ang. Hopefully, turtle going to eat them. Well, he can jump out, or she can jump out if she wants. Mm, um, right. Mm, um, make it. Oh, it's great. <laughs> when time to work, he not work. He like a baby. Just pray aloud lots of time. Gonna slap him soon. Thing for, got something for later to, to correct again. He got something. He got something. It's a dinosaur egg. <laughs> a goose that hasn't got a boyfriend. Oh, she's just seen it. She's not happy now, is she? <laughs> Sorry, Gertrude. No Thank tea, you. man. So, so, so happy. Look at that egg. Oh, no. Oh, egg come out a lot. I'll just put her in the tank. Don't, don't want them to lose them. Look, nearly wow. had there, what? I'll put her in there. Ah, put her straight in here. Let's go then. Put a bit of hyacinth in the corner for her. While this tank's draining down, We've spruced this tank up, so the team's got in there and cleaned it all out. 
uh, now we're topping it back up with fresh water unfortunately it's not it's not rainwater that we've collected but it's the next best thing here on the farm it's out of our borehole so we put the hyacinth back in but we have thinned it out quite a lot and um, we've got one pregnant girl in there we're gonna we're gonna try this as a, a hatching tank for several crayfish normally we just put one in per plastic bowl like we've got here i'm going to show you how to do set up one of these it's a complete setup on its own later on but for today uh, all these are going to go into this tank and we're going to see how we get on yes there will be some predation i think as long as you keep plenty of food in there lots of hidey places which there are then we should see some degree of success uh, we don't know until we give nature a chance do we seven pregnant girls in you go. New home, new home. Let's see how you get on. Tell me when they're out. One more. Yay. Oh dear. Happy my. <laughs> Hello. Good, isn't it? Second tank, nice and clean. So Toon's just going to put the plug back in with the overflow pipe. And then we'll start topping this back up. And then we're going to introduce the girls that aren't pregnant and the biggest stud muffin we got. Here's a treat for Gertrude. Oh, let go, please. Just let him go for now, I think. You feel sorry to him? It looks bloody tasty to me. <laughs> he got no craw. Well, all right, he got a meaty tail. All right, all right. Hang on, hang on. Right, so we've got one spare boy, and they've both got a good track record of jigging, so time to put them in, missus. Okay. So this lot need to up the game. Sexy time. Eight. Nine. Nine girl and ten. One, one lucky four. boy. That all ten together. But it's not very lucky for this boy. No, does he not work hard to get kill from the girl, isn't it? Ruthless crayfish farming, isn't it? Even when you do your job, you still end up in the pan. Dead crayfish walking, let me call that. That's looking tasty already. Look at this, the wife's so pleased of her ingenuity. <laughs> Guy, this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you how they're hanging, hanging. Ah, do your job. I don't talk about hanging, hanging job, video job. That's how they're hanging, hanging. <laughs> Look like they eat each other, but they're not. They're sexy time. I don't want to stop the happy feelings. <laughs> so to finish off, we're now at the infamous jig tank. Uh, this is where we got the old girls in here. Uh, just five of them. Uh, we've got the stud muffin in there, and he's he's got a, he's a proven goal scorer. He uh, gets them at the door very very quickly every single time. We're not going to bother cleaning it out. We only clean it out twice a year, really. And we'll check the girls out, and then anyone that is pregnant, we'll take them out, put the others back. We very rarely feed in here. There's no filtration in any of these, no aeration. We just let nature do its business. Plenty of places for them to hide. There's plenty of fish in there, little guppies. So hopefully we can find some crayfish. Every time we start lifting them out, we think there's no crayfish left in here, and then all of a sudden, there they all are. There's a lot of frogs in here, and we're just seeing the first crayfish. Yes. 
so oh, quite a fist going. Oh, I see, it's just one. So that's the only little bit of disappointment we got with the jig tank drawing a blank. Four girls in there. So we, we did lose a girl not so long ago. Uh, the boy's still all right. So we just grabbed another girl out one of the tanks that we just cleaned and we'll pop them back in here. So we're back up to five girls and a boy. And uh, we'll give him one more chance. If he doesn't get him pregnant next time, we'll swap out the boy and uh, put another fellow in there. Right, in you go, girl. Gonna free fall crayfish. Woo! Score out of 10 misses overall? 20 out of 10. Well, I can't. The last one was an epic fail. So, <laughs> right, we're gonna leave the tanks topping up. I'll throw some of the hyacinth to the to the goose, do a bit of mulching with the rest of it. So the issue with the grow out pond, I have been giving it a bit, bit of thought and I don't think it's that big tilapia doing the damage, although for sure it is eating some, because we definitely would be catching some females that are buried up. I mean, you can see how quick they they get pregnant in the tanks. But I'm just thinking, is it the depth of the water? It could be. Now the water is dropping because it is the, the height of the dry season at the moment. So you know, the water comes up from below and through the sides, so it's it's clean water. It's not it's not discharging from um, anywhere else. You know, sort of contaminated. Other than that. I don't know, perhaps not enough protein, but again, you know, the, the crayfish in the tanks, we we give them very, very little food. You know, they're eating the roots and bits and bobs that fall in there, and then sometimes we just throw a little bit of pellet. So what I'm going to do is, um, we've got quite a lot of pellet left. I'm going to start feeding them every night, just uh, just down the side, they definitely eat it. I've every time I feed them, you can you can see them all congregating around it. So, and then we'll throw the trap in again in another month and see if that's made a difference. If it's not the food that's the the issue, they're not they're not getting pregnant. Then I'm inclined to think it's the depth of the water. Maybe it's too deep. Although the water looks really really low in here, it's still about two meters deep. Uh, whereas in the tanks, you can see sometimes it's only a couple of inches deep. And, uh, well, they only have to look at the boy crayfish and they fall pregnant. So maybe, maybe that's something to do with it. If you've got any other ideas uh, why it might be the case, then let us know. And you can see we're, we're not even running the air stones anymore. There's no filtration on the tanks. I mean, apart from the tanks being made out of concrete or, or the plastic tanks, um, it's, it's pretty much as nature. So I don't know. Uh, what I might knock up is a, a, a few sort of like semi-suspended nets. So uh, we've got some like blue mosquito net. Uh, I'm going to weight that down to the bottom of here uh, and then suspend it up with like a Pepsi bottle or something like that. Just create more surface area for, for crayfish to, to hide, more surface area for algae to grow on. And uh, we'll go from there. Other than that, I might step up the weeds that I'm throwing in around the side of the pond because they definitely do eat that. So uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's not it's not a big issue for us because you can see how productive the the other tanks are for getting them pregnant. And then you know it is a grow out pond just here, but it would be nice that you know eventually we hope to have all these four ponds around here all producing crayfish or at least two of them and maybe some fresh water shrimp in you know the big freshwater shrimp uh, in the other in the other ponds but we might have to add oxygen for that but we want everything super super easy to to keep and we want everything just about free to feed it doesn't cost us a penny to feed them so yeah i think we're gonna up the natural food sources in these ponds and um, hopefully we won't have to rely on pellet apologies again that it's took so long to do a crayfish video uh, goats has taken over our our life here on the farm, but we're still as passionate about the crayfish as we've, we've ever been. We're going to have a good feed of them tonight. I am going to throw the trap back into the pond 
uh, because I think we've only got about 10 big boys to eat. We're going to put them in a salt water solution, sli slightly stronger than last time, uh, just for about five or six hours. And then Toon's going to do a famous butter with garlic and fresh chilies in there. So if you're not checked out that video, uh, there's a link in the description and also on the end screen coming up now. Uh, let's see, salt crab for make some thumb, but my husband tried to make salt crayfish. Okay. Okay.